Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate you stopping by. I've got my too much technology around me. That's what I have. Today's episode isn't about dating. It's about something that in a relationship is likely to happen, if at all, much later after the dating phase. And that's once you've been in a long-term committed relationship for some time and either you know or you're contemplating the end of that relationship. Never easy. I have a lot of coaching clients who have gone through this and I've coached them through this change of relationship status and being alone after having relied upon or enjoyed somebody's presence in the relationship for a long time. Going from being part of a team to being solo is quite a change. And a lot of times it's easier with a coach or a friend or somebody to lean on as you go through that. A divorce, that's been an option for you from marriage in the United States since about 1857. And just because it's legal and because it was a legal marriage doesn't make it any more difficult or any harder. There are other things around the relationship that would make it more or less difficult, I would imagine. If you're wondering, how do you know when it's time? What are the questions I should ask myself or the situations I should look at in order to figure out whether or not it's time for me to give up? That's what we're talking about today. That's what's on the agenda, and I hope you'll stick around. We'll start with the most obvious reason that you would walk away, should walk away, and should never feel guilt about walking away, whether you have children or not, you'd be, this would be for the protection of your children and yourself, and that would be in the case of physical abuse. I don't think you have to go much further in analyzing this situation to figure out which is better to stay or to go. That one's pretty cut and dried. Protect yourself and your children at all costs. Find a way, find support, find some place to go. And if you are experienced or your children are experiencing physical abuse, I, who am not a therapist and most therapists and your best friend would agree it's time to walk away from that relationship. Next up would be not physical, but mental and emotional abuse. How are you supposed to thrive in an environment where you're experiencing this kind of day to day? Definitely not a thrive situation and definitely not more enjoyable with a partner. It's probably not a super difficult decision to make to leave a relationship when you're experiencing this regularly. The third one would be substance abuse without the inclination, the desire, or the efforts to get help or to change. Living with somebody who isn't trying to help themselves to get better or trying to create a better life for themselves and their family is probably not somebody you want to tether yourself to for the long run until they can sort out all of their personal issues. And perhaps that would be a time to revisit the conversation of being a couple. But if someone's not taking care of themselves, they can't take care of you. And you certainly can't make those decisions for them to help them when they don't actually want help. So there's a little switch there, right? They've got to want the help. You can want them to get help, but they have to want it also. You can try to be helpful, but if somebody's tuned out to that, you make no progress. You're just banging your head against the wall. And you have to wait for some type of an epiphany where somebody realizes that they want to change. Can't change somebody who doesn't want to. Number four in this list of when you know is that the person you are in a relationship with has mental health issues, which are a personality disorder that doesn't allow them the emotional capacity to love and be in a relationship and put somebody above themselves and to be able to be a partner to somebody. Whether there's no empathy or just an inability to make a connection and love somebody else, you're setting yourself up for disappointment after disappointment if you're in love with somebody and trying to build a life with that person. They don't have the tools to build. I realize that some of you are afraid of ending a relationship because you don't want to deal with the repercussions of disappointing family, um, your religion might dictate otherwise, and also that you don't want to be judged. 
and I had some thoughts on being judged and it actually made me have this vision. I was picturing our earliest ancestors and wondering, did early man just stick around with their partner no matter what? You know, nobody's going out and picking berries. Nobody's out hunting. You just left our children unattended while you were out doing whatever they did back then if it wasn't hunting and gathering. And I thought that there was no society to judge for that. I would imagine that sometimes they did choose a more suitable partner who was more responsible if they'd chosen poorly the first time around. And as far as that fear of failure, I think we really have to think about failure a little differently. In a situation where there are children, this decision becomes much easier because the children are the primary concern. And I am certain that a child living in a small family unit where one of the persons are being abused mentally, physically, emotionally is not a healthy situation for a child growing up to someday be a person in a relationship. If there's no good example in this home life, then I think that makes the decision super easy to walk away so that you can set a good example for these people you've chosen to set an example for, to raise and try to set off, set off, send off into the world as their best possible self with the best chances of assimilating and being successful and happy in this world. If you can't set a good example of the relationship you want them to have, that's kind of your answer. And I think one way to look at that would be, if my child were in this relationship, would I encourage them to stay or would I encourage them to move on? And shouldn't we love ourselves as much as we love our children? We should try. One of my clients who is still married said to me when I said, well, are you going to finalize this? It's very hard to find somebody who wants to get involved and start dating somebody who hasn't yet finalized the end of their past relationship. And he said, you know, I just keep putting it off and putting it off. And I'm like, well, what, what's the holdup here? Is there financial difficulties to sort out? He said, no, that's already been sorted. But I think the issue is I just don't want to admit that I failed. And I said to him, why? I fail all the time. That's the cost of doing business if you're trying things that you don't know how to do well and or you've tried and you're not good at it or something goes terribly wrong. I don't understand this fear of failure. I'm failing at things as just one person trying something on my own. If you're failing at a marriage, that's a two-person job and you're not even necessarily responsible for half of it. There's a chance that you're responsible for all of it, half of it or absolutely none of it. But I don't think there's any shame in failure. It's something if you really did try, it gave it your best shot. Sometimes somebody else doesn't want to work at it or it's not a priority to them or they are not at all living up to the deal that you made originally. I want for you as I do for myself and all the people I care about here in my little world, to live your best life, to be happy, to be able to experience joy. And if you want to share your life, to do it with somebody who appreciates you, loves you, prioritizes you, and makes the effort to care for you in the way that makes you feel special and loved. One day, keep track of all the things you do and fail at initially. It's amazing. There's no reason to be afraid of failure or to think that that's a negative thing. You know what failure is? Failure is what you experience right before you succeed at something. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel, hit the ring bell to be notified every time a new episode goes live. And, oh, mom is suggesting that maybe a thumbs up would be great if you have time for that. So all these things are free. These buttons, you're just pushing stuff. I appreciate you stopping by today. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. And until then, have a good one. This little story kind of sets us up for how I was looking at this divorce question. And I was just amongst a lot of people and thinking about the fact that from a distance, we are all these little tiny dots, these little busy dots moving about in our life. 
as tiny dots of energy in this universe scurrying about all the rules and regulations and the social mores that we follow were all designed by and created by other dots. And I think sometimes that helps me put things into perspective when I'm thinking about what we should do. In situations where there's a feeling or a client has a feeling about, well, that's how it's supposed to be, or that's how it's always been, I think, well, yeah, who made all of these rules up? Just us, right? And the reason I bring up all these dots of energy is because that's who created marriage. And if we're stepping away from a marriage, I think it's important to remember that this institution was created by dots of energy, like yourself.